Hi there, good evening. This is Lakshmi Chattered Accountant. In this session, we are going to discuss about foreign branches. Foreign branches generally maintain independent books of accounts, but the only difference is they have to maintain their books of accounts in the currency of the country in which they operate. For an example, if a branch is at UK, they have to maintain their books of accounts in pound. If the branch is, at, uh, is in the US, they have to maintain their books of accounts in dollars. What the HO has to do is, at the time of preparation of the financial statement, they have to incorporate the balances of the branch in their balance sheet. So, for the purpose of incorporating the balances of the branch, they have to translate the trial balances of the foreign branches into Indian rupees. Uh, in this case, I have taken that the uh, HO is in India. If the HO is in US, they have to translate uh, other currencies into dollar. So for the purpose of translation, they have to apply the exchange rate. So that is the thing what they have to do. For the purpose of accounting for uh, foreign branches, we are classifying the branches into two types. One is integral operation and other one is non-integral operation. In case of a integral operation, the activities of the branch mainly dependent on the HO, mainly dependent on the HO, which means uh, they sell the imported goods from the HO and uh, they remit the collections to the HO itself, which means it is, uh, it is like a dependent branch. It is like a dependent branch. They depend the uh, HO for all their transactions. Uh, most probably they are not independent. Even if they are maintaining their books of accounts, they are not independent. They simply acts like one of the uh, division of the uh, head office. So that is the thing in case of uh, integral operation. In case of a non-integral operation, they raise their finance, they produce their products, they sell it in the currency other than the report currency. They have their transactions in the currency of the country in which they are operating. Even if they need, in case if they need any fund, they borrow in their local currency in their local currency not in the currency of the HO but they borrow in the local currency and uh, they have their own independent transactions uh, everything they do in an independent manner even if they are having certain relationship with the HO for an example they uh, get some money from the HO also but uh, they are not mainly dependent on the HO for their transactions even if the balances of that particular uh, branches is also to be incorporated with the uh, HO's uh, balance sheet. For the purpose of uh, these incorporations, uh, we have to translate the uh, foreign branches trial balance into Indian rupees or the reporting currency of the HO. Reporting currency of the HO. For the purpose of translation, we have to apply exchange rates. Different exchange rates for different items. Different exchange rates for different items. In case of integral operation, what we have to do is, the first thing is, we have to convert uh, all the transactions as on the date of transactions. In case of integral foreign operations, we have to translate the transactions as at the date of transactions, which means if the transactions is happening on 1st September, we have to incorporate that transactions in the books of the HO as on 1st uh, September itself. And at the balance sheet date, what we have to do is, this is a very important thing for the purpose of working out the problem with respect to foreign branches. The first thing is, monetary items has to be translated at a closing rate. Monetary items has to be translated at a closing rate. Non-monetary items, for an example, fixed asset, as well as the depreciation relating to that particular fixed asset has to be translated by applying the rate as on the date of purchase in case if the assets are valued at cost price if the assets are valued at revalued figures then we have to apply the rate as on the date of valuation i am repeating again in case of non monetary items like fixed assets in case of integral foreign operations we have to apply the rate as on the date of purchase of the fixed asset as on the date of purchase of the fixed asset if you are taking the cost price of the asset 
If you are considering the revalued figures, then you have to take the exchange rate as on the date of valuation. Then coming to cost of inventories. Usually inventories are valued at cost or net realizable value whichever is lower. For the purpose of valuation of inventory, we are applying the conservatism concept. Uh, all accounting principles are similar to that of the uh, normal branches. So here also we are applying the conservatism concept. So inventories are valued at cost or market price whichever is lower. In case if you are taking the cost, then we have to take the exchange rate as on the date of incurrence of expenditure. As on the date of incurrence of expenditure. If you are taking the net realizable value, then you have to take the rate as on the date of closing. Date of closing, which means the balance sheet date uh, exchange rate has to be taken for the purpose of conversion of closing stock. Then what we have to do with respect to exchange differences? Because we are translating the figures at a different rates, which means for current asset, we are applying the closing rate. For non-current asset, that is non-monetary items, we are applying the rate as on the date of acquisition or as on the date of valuation. So, we are applying different rates for different items. So, the balance sheet or trial balance will not tally. So, the exchange differences has to be transferred to the profit and loss account. So, this is the thing what we have to do in case of integral operation. Then coming to non-integral operation. In case of non-integral operation, balance sheet items has to be converted. Balance sheet items means all assets as well as liabilities. Either it may be a monetary or a non-monetary items. We have to convert it by using the closing rate. This is the main difference between integral foreign operation and non-integral foreign operation. In case of integral foreign operation, what we have done is monetary items are transferred or translated at its uh, closing rate and non-monetary items as on the date of purchase or as on the date of valuation. But here in case of non-integral operation, we have to apply the closing rate alone for the monetary items as well as for the non-monetary items. For incomes or expenses, we have to apply the average rate. We have to apply the average rate. The resulting exchange differences has to be transferred to Foreign Exchange Translation Reserve. Foreign Exchange or Foreign Currency Translation Reserve. In case, if there is a change in classification, which means integral to non-integral or non-integral to integral. In case if it is transferred from non-integral to uh, integral, we have to follow the procedures which we are following for integral operations. If it is from non-integral to integral, we have to follow the procedure of integral. If it is from integral to non-integral, we have to follow the procedures of non-integral. Then the second point, in case, if it is transferred, uh, transferred from integral to non-integral, the differences, exchange differences has to be transferred to foreign currency translation reserve. If it is transferred from non-integral to integral, then already existing foreign currency translation reserve has to be retained until the investment is completely disposed. So even if it is converted from non-integral to in integral, we could not transfer the balance of the foreign currency translation reserve to profit and loss account. We have to hold that reserve until the investment is disposed. So this is the thing which we have to take care while we are preparing the uh, trial balances or balance sheet of a foreign branches. Thank you.